everybody, welcome to One More Round with Josh Norris. I got my co-host Eric Stearns with me. Today, we're super excited. We have Ryan McBurney with us now. Ryan is a breath master specialist. So today, we're gonna to talk about all things breath. Uh, we're gonna actually do a breath session uh, on air, so stick around for that. But I know you're gonna get value out of this. I want you to listen to it all the way through, but if you find some snippets, share this with a friend, you know, give us a like, you know, comment on YouTube. Uh, we want to engage a lot more this year. Uh, so appreciate you tuning in and hey, welcome Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here with yeah. you and your guests. Yeah, man, this is uh, super cool because we were introduced by Nick Arapulis. Shout out to, to Nick, uh, who's got the Just Grow podcast. And uh, you guys have known each other for a little while, right? Yeah, I'd say at this point, probably four or five years now. Okay. Yeah, because I think the first exposure I had to you, didn't you do the breath work for his event not too long ago? Yeah, yeah. So he has these live podcast parties, live mm -hmm. podcast events, and uh, I've had the pleasure of being able to MC those events. So I introduce him, and before I introduce him, I always take the crowd through like a five minute breath work thing, and people love that. So I I know it was super cool for me because I was in the audience when you did it, and it makes you more attentive. Like after just that brief five minute deal, I was more attentive to what was going on. I was just more prepared because it was, it was like seven, 7.30 at night. By that time, I'm usually turning into a pumpkin and getting <laughs> a little bit tired, you know, rather than listening to a podcast. Um, so I, it was super helpful. Um, Eric and I were actually, last week, we got to see Gary Brecca uh, with 10X awesome. Health. Yep. And he ran like a little bit of a breath work thing before he started speaking. And, you know, I'm starting to see a trend like that's something that we need. So how'd you get started in this world? Yeah, so I know you guys are familiar with Wim Hof, but anybody who's not, uh, definitely look him up. He's an amazing person in the space, just has done so many amazing things in his life. And uh, yeah, so I, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast. And then uh, right on that podcast episode, he was explaining you know, how to do the breath. And after hearing all the amazing things he'd done, I was like, I want to be a superhero like this guy, you know, and <laughs> yeah. learn how to do some of that. So. Uh, I was really excited to try the breath work and just laid down after I explained how to do it, pushed pause, laid down and did some breath work and I was like, wow, this is the most incredible thing I've ever done. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do more of this. And I just started the journey. It's awesome. Well, One thing I, I love about it, it's like it's something everybody can do. If you can breathe, you can do breath work, right? Mm -hmm. So like that was your initial exposure. It, how did you transition that into actually doing it for a living now? Yeah, so it was a gradual evolution, but you know, it really started with uh, just deepening my own practice. And like as I did, I just couldn't help but want to tell other other people about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is so incredible. People need to know, you know. So I would just tell my friends, and I tell people to try it. And then a week or two later, I'd be like, hey, what'd you think? Like, how was it? Like, oh, I haven't done it yet. I told you it's the most amazing thing ever, you know, like. And so after a while, it was like, okay, I'm gonna do a class. I'm gonna just like hold a class, have all my friends come. So that was like what really got me started was just wanting people to try it. So I think I charged like 10 bucks per person <laughs> for the first one. You know, it was like, I didn't want that to be a reason people didn't come. And then from there, it was like, you know, people were just blown away and just a slow evolutionary process of me kind of learning more things, different iterations. So that was really how I got started with it. Yeah, that's, that's cool. So. Uh, w did you find that a lot of people before they actually experienced it were like, yeah, you're, you're crazy. What, what, are you, what are you doing here? Yeah, you know, it, it was, I think more so just like uh, they didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't even know how to explain it, you know, and it was kind of just like, a, yeah, sure, like I'll, I'll try it. But like I wasn't prefacing it and building mm -hmm. it up as like, you know, this big, amazing thing. I don't know. But yeah, it was a. Uh, I think, you know, just one of those things that after a little while I started understanding it more myself, mm -hmm. understanding what was happening inside myself as I learned more of the science and learned more of, you know, the just like having a better understanding of my own experience. Mm -hmm. So then I could start explaining it to people. A Expressing it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's it, what, what, when you first did it, what got you so passionate so fast? Because you like, you got the bug. Yeah. What inside you went, this is awesome. Yeah. So I'll say... It was the, the very first session I did. It was uh, when I laid down during that, I paused that podcast episode. And so I, you know, give a little backstory here. I was uh, throughout high school, really started questioning God. I was raised Christian, you know, and I just like thought, man, like, I don't know if I buy this whole thing and really started questioning it. In college, I went down a route of like, 
uh, I took an atheism class, took a lot of philosophy classes, and was just like exploring a lot of different yeah. things and nature of reality. And I love science and the universe and all this stuff. And if I felt like a lot of that felt empty, you know, and I just didn't know what to do with that. And then uh, I ended up tearing my ACL playing college football. And that was kind of like, in a lot of ways, a saving grace. I ended up going back to Arizona. I come back to Arizona, finish up at ASU, and I'm taking religion and spirituality classes. And that was like, I was just curious about all the other religions. You know, I knew about Christianity, yeah. but then uh, I remember learning all these things and realizing, oh, wow, okay, all the religions are saying the same thing. You know, at the, at the very core of what they are, it's like the same experience. Someone had an experience with, something greater than them right the 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 source energy god whatever we want to call it and so i knew this stuff but i didn't understand it i I didn't ever have that like direct experience with god myself Mm -hmm. or with source and i did a lot of meditation all all these different things but it wasn't until breath work that i had that first connection with the divine Mm -hmm. you know in that in that session i remember thinking like this is God. Like this is this is it. Like this is the end. Like I'm home. Yeah. You know, and it was like wow. It was a, the the first really deep spiritual experience I've really ever had. So that like the, <laughs> that point kind of got you to be oh. like wow. Well, if, if, yeah, that's yeah. cool, right? That yeah. would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, meeting God for the first time or whatever, and and having that connection that that's huge. Yeah. Um, like so what are like the main benefits a lot of people that you do the coaching and stuff like what are they experience like what are the huge benefits of breath work in itself yeah you know i'd say number one with the 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 types of sessions that i hold is uh emotional release Mm -hmm. and you know whether it's just as simple as saying when we go through life and experience emotions if we don't express those emotions then we repress them suppress them right and that can lead to depression but then you know just at the very most fundamental level that emotion is getting stored in tissue in the body right Mm -hmm. so it still exists in the body so then when we start breathing we're activating it and it's bringing that energy up and it's coming up to be expressed right and people might feel that emotion and they have that release Um, and then you know we can talk about the nervous system and what that's doing there and there's all the emotional responses we have to a traumatic event or all the uh, you know, instinctual responses we have and then all of a sudden something becomes a pattern in our life and how we respond to things on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. So really, you know, at a deeper level, what we're doing is getting back to those initial responses that become our patterns and our ways of being and our personality and we're creating space to kind of re-pattern, reprogram the nervous system, the whole mind-body system. Awesome. So rather than being reactionary and holding that stuff in, you're reprogramming yourself to breathe and kind of let it, let it go type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So it, yeah, let's let's the emotion go, let's mm-hmm. the charge go, create space to kind of come back to that neutral, that homeostasis. Mm-hmm. So then where we can now rewrite the program. You know that there was a, a mentor of mine I've learned from Stephen Jagger's amazing, uh, has done a lot of really good work in the space, and talks about you know how a lot of the coaching space the coaching industry and whatnot they they start with the the top-down approach right the psyche we work on mindset first we try to identify these limiting beliefs or identify the stories that we're telling that are limiting us in life and we try to work on things from that level Mm -hmm. but you know that's that's not the whole uh, spectrum that's not super effective because when you when we work from the bottom-up approach we work on the, the body of the level, the nervous system, the soma, the body, then we're actually getting to the root cause of those things that were upstream from the getting stories. to the brain. Yep, exactly. Uh, have you ever heard of um, uh, Bruce Lipton, The oh, Biology yeah. of Belief? Yeah. I read his book probably 14 years ago, and basically going through learning Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and affirmations and all the things we're talking about, You know, he was the first person basically to go, emotions is, are at this cellular level mm-hmm. and it was really really ahead of its time and now we went to the conference with Gary Brecka yeah. and he's doing he's been doing a study with him and another gentleman I can't remember his name 
based on the. I remember who it is. Yeah, um, it is uh, Joe Dispenza. Yeah, and oh, it's wow. and it's coming it's out. Huge. It's yeah. coming out, and you know, and he says like, he basically said I can look into this. So you're exactly right. You know, the the it's at slower level. You got to you've got to get through that. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it thousand percent. Um, well, you recently just started doing breath work too. Like, how how is that? Because I'm uh, excited if you guys are connected. Before he even knew you were on the podcast, he were telling me you started doing it. Well, I thought about getting the pure oxygen thing after Dana White was sick, and they started helping him, mm -hmm. and which has been amazing for him. And I said, okay, well, hey, I'm I'm his age, and, and I've lived a pretty fast life owning companies and stuff. And I go, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into all this stuff, and then. I, you know, I go, I don't know if I want to spend $6,000 on a, a pure oxygen machine. I go, and I, someone said, hey, check this out. So I checked off, went off on that, and I started doing it for a couple of weeks. And it was hard the first week. I am not going to, you could, he's, this guy's a master. That first week, I'm like, I'm trying to concentrate, stay in it. Then I hit the second week, and I got, I, I found my pace. And now, you know, I do it probably every other day, you know, but it's, it's it's like a workout. I mean, it's you know I don't got to think about lifting weights. Mm -hmm. I don't think about that. But then you start getting better and better and better. But you just just gets all the junk out. I don't know how to explain it any better. Mm -hmm. Simple. My simple way of saying it. Yeah. No, gets the junk out and it just kind of makes you feel things that are bothering you. You start eliminating them. I think yeah. that's exactly what you're saying. I just say it a little simpler. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Perfect. You know, it's uh, one of my other mentors, Dan Brule, talks about how when we breathe. Sometimes, especially in a deeper breathing session, something like 20, 45 minutes, you know, you start to breathe and you just keep breathing. And it's like these icky feelings start to come up and it's like, ah, oh, this, this, I don't like this, you know, but if you just keep breathing through it, you're releasing it. And like, but you think that's emotion, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's what you were talking about. That's those emotions and people don't, you know, it's, yeah. the, or potential sickness maybe in your body from storing a, that junk. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. So one of the things that was interesting to me, and I was telling you, like my first experience was with Michael over at Optimize, and he was he mm -hmm. took me through the Wim Hof, you know, session, and it was great. But two things: number one, I got lightheaded, <laughs> uh, which I mean, I felt stoned. I mean, I, I kid you not. And the second thing was, you know, you do your final breathe out of the Wim Hof, and you hold it as long as possible. And I held my breath for a minute and forty five seconds, which was longer than I ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Like, how was that even possible? Yeah. So, for anybody who doesn't know, the, the Wim Hof method specifically, and, you know, many other breath techniques that are very similar, there's a round of breathing, might take 30 breaths or more, and what we're doing there is hyperoxygenation, hyperventilation. And so we're oxygenating the body, increasing the oxygen levels, decreasing the CO2 levels, mm. and then we go into this, the end of the round, we go into the out-breath hold, so you inhale, exhale, then hold, pause, All right? And the oxygen's way up here, CO2's way down here. And slowly but surely, right, especially if you're laying down, your body's just using up a little bit of oxygen at a time, mm -hmm. and CO2 starts building up. And CO2 is actually, as the CO2 builds up, that's what tells us to breathe, is that that's what signals the trigger. the base yeah. of the brainstem, yeah. And the, so the oxygen, we can still have plenty of oxygen in the body and we get the urge to breathe. So there's actually ways to kind of trick that and go even deeper into an out-breath hold and go longer and longer just by offloading some more CO2. So how do you offload more after you've already breathed out? Yeah, so let's say, you know, you're doing an out-breath hold, right? You, and I pause, then I can also, like squeeze all the air out, right? Oh, wow. So at that, at that, there's kind of like that neutral zone where I'm just relaxed, and then I can actively exhale, let out more breath. Got it. And so there's even a way, like right before you do that, you kind of take a little small sip of air in, and then right back out and squeeze all of it out. Mm -hmm. And that tricks the brain to say, hey, we breathed, we, we're good now. You know, yeah. we're, we're good to hold the breath longer. And it offloads more CO2, so you're able to go deeper into that. And you know, I was kind of mentioning to you before, yeah. there's so many benefits in that out breath hold. That's a really powerful part of a lot of the breath practice. And it's uh, it's also called intermittent hypoxia, mm -hmm. right? Hypo oxygenation. Uh, and in Russia, they actually, they've been using, uh, you know, you were talking about those, the breathing machines, right? The 100% oxygen. Yeah. Well, they have machines, probably similar machine that'll deliver lower oxygen 
to put people into oh, intermittent wow. hypoxia, mm -hmm. and they use that to treat a lot of different diseases. They've been doing it for decades, and you know, like you said, it's tens of thousands of dollars for these machines when you could just use the breath. Wow, that's, these that's techniques. Wow. Yeah. So, like, kind of going on the whole like breath and holding your breath because this is fascinating to me. I've always been into the magic magicians, right? So, and there's different types, but specifically, like, you got Houdini and you have David Blaine. These guys are known for having feats of being able to hold their breath for seven, eight, nine minutes. Do, they, you, do you think they utilize some of these uh, different things you're doing with breath work? How do you think they accomplish that? Man, you know, they, they probably are. Uh, whether they've learned it from Wim Hof or mm -hmm. whatever, or they just like through exploration, mm -hmm. but they're, they're doing these types of things and one of the uh, things I bet they're doing is really reaching this place of, uh, there's this concept of samadhi in uh, the Indian culture, and it's this like space of no nothingness. You just shut the mind off completely, and you can even uh, get the heart rate so slow and really, really gentle beats from the heart as well, where it's almost immeasurable. Hmm. And so, Scientists have, you know, studied some gurus from India and, you know, different people who have been right. able to do this. And what they've actually seen is uh, some of these gurus, it, it looks like their heart is not beating, but it's actually beating like 300 times per minute, but these little butterfly beats, these tiny little beats, and there's just like little ripples going through. The that would kill us. Let's get there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, you know, I imagine he's... David Blaine or, you know, some yeah. of these guys that are doing things like that yeah. where the body is in this just place of supreme calm. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating that your mind can get you there, you know, yeah. into these types of things. And obviously there's there's techniques for everything. So um, but where, so where do you want to go with this? I know right now, like, people can find you at your website, which is mastermybreath.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're teaching classes. You probably do some one-on-one -on -one work. Um, but, like, where do you want to take this? Yeah, you know, the... Uh, one thing I've realized is, you know, there, there's what, 8 billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can only get to so many, right? So the more I can share the power of the breath, the better. And one of the best ways to do that is to teach other people to do the same, to Absolutely. share the power of the breath. So, you should. Yeah. And the world is, we need more breath workers, whether it's someone who's a coach and like we were talking about earlier, someone who's a mindset coach, that's really powerful stuff. And there's so many great techniques, NLP, this, that, the other, but in combination with breath work, something that works at the somatic level, that's what's really gonna create more powerful impact and more powerful results for people. Is so, I, you know, I just want people to know, first of all, the breath work exists and you know, how powerful it can be. And then, you know, if somebody wants to learn more about breath work and how they can weave it in their own practice, mm -hmm. create a practitioner program so people can learn and they can do that through online training or through a retreat. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Can I ask you a question? So you've been training people and doing seminars. Just as far as people learning how to oxygenate themselves better, huge benefit. Talk on that. And then secondly, uh, have you had some results with, with ill people that this has just changed their life and just made them better when yeah. they've been maybe going to doctors and different things like that and it's changed their life on that level and they couldn't fix their problems? Right, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's... Uh, First, you know, what you talked about with the oxygen, you know, it's really interesting, actually. There's, uh, there's two schools of thought that are like opposite end of the spectrum. And uh, th they talk a lot about this in the book Breath by James Nestor. Amazing book. And it's that uh, the less we breathe, the better. There's what's called the, the oxygen advantage, mm -hmm. which is uh, accompanied by Patrick McEwen. And he teaches kind of like the opposite side of the spectrum of Wim Hof and the other guys hmm. about uh, saying everyone is over breathing and are more mouth breathing, breathing too many times per minute. You know, most people breathe 20 to 30,000 times per day when mm -hmm. really we, if we're breathing optimally, we want it closer to like 10,000 times per day. Hmm. And, you know, I, what I was mentioning, right, when we over oxygenate, we get like, let's say 100% oxygen, CO2 is way down here. That's great in short spurts, right? And if we do a breath session, but if that's a chronic thing and we're doing that all day long, where I'm just over breathing all day long, it's bad. Not good. Right? So it's all about balance, really. Yeah. Yeah. And 
you know, then the, the there's a lot of uh, evidence to actually show the less we breathe, the longer we live. So if I can get, uh, what is it? I think it's five and a half breaths per minute is the perfect ratio. And then it depends on body weight, mm. and height, size, all the things to kind of see where on that spectrum you are. But around five and a half times per minute is the perfect breath. And that's a five and a half second inhale, five and a half second exhale. So it's 5.5 seconds each, yeah. 5.5 seconds, wow. or 5.5 breaths per minute. So yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, and, uh, but yeah, you know, the getting, getting the body in that state where there is that hyper oxygenation and low CO2, a lot of amazing things happen. You know, there's a lot of deep science within there, but then the same goes for the, the opposite when the oxygen gets really low and the mm -hmm. CO2 is really high, it's really just putting the body in a state of stress, right? It's going to create more resilience in the mm -hmm. body. Yeah. It's just like plants, right? If you don't water it for yeah. a little bit longer, it's going to bear better fruit, you know, Absolutely. more nutrient rich fruit. And, uh, yeah. Then, um, the second question you asked, uh, results from people yeah, who yeah. Yeah, health and yeah, you know, I haven't worked with a lot of people specifically with any chronic illnesses, um, or anything like that. I've been, you know, really interested in maybe working with some people with asthma to see if I can support them in getting uh, a reduction in their symptoms because that, that's just one area I feel most comfortable and confident in mm -hmm. with like a lot of that oxygen advantage stuff I mentioned and the book breath. There's some really simple things people can do to start to reduce those symptoms. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's so much research starting to come out and a lot of case studies about people who have had those amazing trans, uh, what is it, uh, when a disease goes into uh, oh, remission. remission. Yeah, I was going to say transmission. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. It's in my car. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, Wim Hof, there, there's a lot of uh, examples of that where people have had those amazing experiences. So I know it's possible. I, I haven't personally. You're just not there. You'll end yeah. up there probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll let's see where your path is going to lead you. Absolutely. Well, you're passionate about this. That's what I probably appreciate sitting with you is I hope that comes out and you're very passionate about that there's no question why you're doing it it's, it's you love to do it that's the most important thing yeah. and it's something simple that can help people and you know, I think emotionally it's probably you're doing a lot more just with people learning how to you know p the world's fast I, that my biggest thing for the younger people now are I feel sorry for them because of technology is great but technology has it just has sped the world up and these kids there's just no time there's no downtime for them that's why i think there's so much mental health issues and you know drugs being used in kids and it's one well, diagnosis of like ADHD and adhd which let's just face it that's not the reality i mean they're they're just hyper triggered constantly you know with stimulation from phones ipads these types of things and their brain isn't developed to be able to take these things exactly on right. so when there's an absence of that they think they're bored because they don't know what it's like not to have dopamine constantly hitting their brain right. so it's, well we had the street light back in our day too yeah. don't come home when the street light turned on you went home uh -huh. you yeah. played sports you you know all those those things and it's just now they set and, you know, we did a childhood obesity program at my old company called uh, Future Generation Project. And uh, that was enlightening to see how many children were obese at such young age. It was, it was horrifying. It was just inactivity and yeah. video games and all those, and, and fast food. I mean, it's, but, right. but yeah. you know, if you could teach kids how to breathe and meditate, you know, and, and self-care. But that's, everything's done with drugs or you've, you're, you're this. And it's, I think that that's what's created the crisis in our, in our healthcare system. Yeah. And I think people are going to, I think this is flipping around with, with the 10 X guys and mm -hmm. meeting you and all that, all these people are in there. I think there's, I think it's going to be, I think it's great. I think it's going to be able to help a lot of yeah. people without taking a pill or, or them pigeonholing you. Like you said, I, I, I'm so excited about this study that's coming out too. I'm very curious to see where this has went in 10 years yeah. on the, on the cellular level of, of, you know, pain and injury and all the different stuff we learn. How, you're exactly right. You carry it. You mm -hmm. have to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I love what you're doing. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you mentioned the obesity. And it's really interesting. There's small nuance here is when we overbreathe and we're doing the hyperoxygenation, the Wim Hof, whatever we want to call it, then 
we're actually burning more fat because oxygen is one of the main ingredients in uh, that fat burn in you know using that as energy for the body so the more oxygen we introduce into the body the more fat we're able to burn 70 percent of what we release from the body is through the breath wow which is that's wild yeah yeah, yeah. it is wild yeah no this is this has been great to learn a little bit and i know the audience right now are listening like all right get to it so we can actually see the breathwork session so i know we, we had prepared to do one um so we'll let you kind of take over on this you know we'll be the uh the hamsters uh, or yeah. guinea pigs, I think, is more uh, Either appropriate. Either yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, right before we started on it, you mentioned uh, you know people could do it, you know, wherever they're listening, whether it's in the car or not. But I do want to say, if anybody's driving, definitely uh, <laughs> yeah. either pull over or you know pause it, come back later. Just want to make sure to stay safe. And uh, yeah, so wherever you are, just getting nice and comfortable, finding a nice seated position, and it's going to be very simple. We're just going to be breathing deeply in and we can start with the nose, but at some point I'll invite you to switch to the mouth. That's always going to amplify the effects a little bit more. We want to take 99% of our breaths through the nose throughout the day, but when we're doing breath work, the, the mouth is okay to get more air in faster. So we can just start with the nose though. Start with breath awareness. That's where I always start. So you can always just come to that breath awareness and I invite you to close your eyes as you get comfortable bring your awareness your attention inward into the breath and just start to notice the breath my breathing into my belly into my chest how does the breath feel see if you can even follow the breath as it goes up through the nose down the airway follow it into the belly and the chest And just noticing yourself breathing in and out, any sensations that come along with that. And then inviting in that conscious breathing, so maybe breathing in a little bit deeper, taking in that nice full breath, belly, chest, expanding in all directions, and then letting go. And we just play with two simple concepts, activation on the inhale, relaxation on the exhale almost like that sigh of relief and feeling yourself create space on the inhale opening and expanding and a big sigh of relief relaxing Feeling any tension, release on the exhale, letting go on the exhale, and then activating on the inhale. And then within the next few breaths, maybe switching to the mouth and start to activate a little bit more. One breath at a time, no rest. You start to activate a little bit more. And as you start to activate more, you may start to feel a little bit lightheaded a little bit tingly, whatever you feel, it's all normal, it's all safe. You just keep breathing, activating on the inhale, relaxing on the exhale. We'll do about 20 more, starting to activate more, maybe increasing the rate, the speed, taking more air in faster. If you start to feel lightheaded or tingly or anything, that's perfect. Breathe deeper into that, see if you can activate it more. Still a big sigh of relief at the end of the inhale, letting it all go. Exhale goes right into the inhale. Inhale goes right into the exhale. It's all this one circular breath. A 
letting go of any thoughts, just going into the breath, going into the activation and the relaxation. Ten more breaths. Nine more. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three more, full in. Two. Now one more, full in and hold at the top. Just being nothing to do, no thinking, just centering, being with what you feel, letting go of the mind, just coming back to center. I thought we were supposed to hold it at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so there's many different techniques. Oh, that was good. I yeah. feel like... I know, I got a little tangly. Yeah, I did. That's a little right. lightheaded. Yeah, that was... Yeah. That was, that was, nice. mm -hmm. that yeah. was cool. And so, you know, <laughs> that's always great to just go in to the breath, and then we can always do an in-breath hold at the end. You can do an out-breath hold. After you do an in-breath hold, you can just go deep into that relaxation, mm -hmm. be in that space for as long as it feels good. And... You know, what we just did there is a great little cheat code to get deep into a meditative state, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to do a little meditation, right, and there's benefits to breath work, benefits to meditation, sometimes they can be considered the same thing, but I think there's a little bit of a difference in just creating space and then mm -hmm. centering, being in stillness. That's a great way to get into stillness is going into that out-breath hold and then just calming things. And That's the dead space. Yeah, kind of yeah. like you're just kind of like well you're not thinking about anything else you like, can't i wasn't yeah you're thinking about breathing <laughs> yeah which is Im yeah. important especially especially if you know if you're watching this listen to it you're a hard charger you got a lot of stress a lot of pressures on you you know maybe you have you know a family and you're balancing business and all this kind of thing i think it's super important to take that time because having that time where you're thinking about nothing else but that moment and that present like can really change your state well, sit in your car before you go to make a sale or yeah. go into an appointment or if you got a stressful appointment or you got to make a phone call and you need to be peaceful. Yeah. Do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. awesome. It's always your exposure. Yeah. Now, uh, you were telling me that you, how often do you like a, a breathwork session that's over 10 minutes? Yeah, myself. Not yourself. Yeah, uh, I'd say over 10 minutes, probably three to five times per week. Okay. You know, uh, um, and you know, I don't, I, I often don't time myself. I'll mm -hmm. just kind of like put a song on or just do no sound, mm -hmm. but you know, I just start breathing and you know, what I teach, uh, inside of my online programs and whatnot is all these different breath techniques that I've learned over time. And when I breathe myself, I'm often just, you know, like a Swiss army knife, just using all, whatever technique feels right in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really adhering to a specific you know, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this. It's just whatever feels right in that moment. You know, my body, my breath is going to tell me what I need to do in that next moment to kind of let go of something that's coming mm -hmm. up or to, like, activate myself a little bit more if I'm kind of feeling lethargic and I want more energy, you know. Uh, maybe I'm feeling some, like, oh, there's a little bit of a hint of an emotion deep mm -hmm. within me so I can kind of, like, breathe into that space in my body and start to activate that, bring it up, and then I have awareness around it. So... You know, strict like 10, 20 minute breathing practice, yeah, probably three, five times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, as far as like a 30 minute, 45 minute, hour long thing, do that like once every two weeks or so. Okay. And you were saying like daily, you'll do like just little two minute ones, yeah, right? Yeah. Here and there. Yep. And that was something I got from my dad, my mentor, Dan Brule, as well mm -hmm. as uh, 10 times a day for at least two minutes mm -hmm. doing a breath practice. And they know that often for me turns into two or five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll like do a little bit of a charging breath and then go out breath hold or in breath hold. Yeah. And you know, if you try to activate and energize a little bit more, probably the in breath hold. Mm -hmm. 
kind of relax and find more stillness, clarity, and the out breath hold. So you use this personally, a lot of what you do, this is how you get the junk out. Yeah. That's exactly. kind of how you, what you do. You just kind of get the junk out. You learn to use this technique and uh, to get the junk out. Yeah. Yeah. So my last question before we wrap up, <laughs> and this is, I think, important for anybody listening, because most people are listening to this podcast, like they're, you know, they're, they're trying to create something out of their life and do something pretty, pretty special, right? Uh, and it's important for us to ha be in peak performance, and that a lot to, has to do with your physiology, and you can change your physiology. What would you recommend for somebody who's getting ready to go in for that sale, getting ready to go up on stage or give a presentation, meet that potential prospect to get themselves into peak performance from a breathwork standpoint? Yeah, you know, uh, I, so I have a five-minute breath blast mm -hmm. that I've created, and so five minute audio it's really 10 minutes but there's just five minutes of music at the end mm -hmm. to you know if you want to stay in that meditative state mm -hmm. but it's about two or three minutes of breathing like what we just did and out breath hold and in breath hold that's great for anything before you go on stage before you hop on a call go into a meeting whatever it is or maybe you have a you know conversation with your significant other and you're just like oh, you know well, i'm not ready for this you know and <laughs> clear out some of this energy i'm feeling <laughs> and you know it's a, a great way to do that so if anybody wants to download that audio it's free and it's right on my website mastermybreath.com okay. yeah and uh yeah there's that audio and three others all different lengths but you know just like five to 20 minute things people can do every single day and just follow along with and that way you know if you don't haven't mastered all the techniques you're able to you know just follow that but yeah. yeah that's you know one of the best things is just a quick charge practice to mm -hmm. clear what's not serving create some space in the body and then get focused and energized i love that man well this is super helpful i mean anybody who's listening to this i yeah. I, I know that you not only got something but you got a practical tool you can literally take well, it in your life and you know and i think sometimes when you get into certain things people go you know are you a yogi or you live with chanting and put the monks lay you know, the, this was just this is pragmatic this isn't you know some you know you i think you can it touches everybody it's it not does. weird it's not like you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's just it's breathing and it's something we all should do and probably do a better job of if nothing else i think it's going to help you on all levels just you know in in human performance yeah. and i and i and i love the where we're headed with human performance it's getting away from the 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 you know medical system we have and getting into self-help and doing things that the earth created for us and that's not weird it just is what it is so right. i love it i love how you explain it i think it's totally cool yeah oh this is this is awesome hey guys i know you got a ton out of this so make sure that you you share this episode out with somebody who breathes so everybody you know make sure you share this out uh but ryan thank you for being on today this is this is super cool um uh, this, uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in today. Uh, we will be back with an episode here in a couple of days, but we appreciate it. We will see you soon.